Today, liberals and the mainstream media are furious that President Trump invited MyPillow CEO to the White House podium after he announced he was dedicating his company's resources to manufacture masks. Uh, also, a study, a new study that's out, shows that droves of Americans are actually turning to prayer. Maybe we can turn this thing around also the Tiger King. Oh, yes, we've got to talk about that. We've got a lot coming up, and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Chad Prather, host of the Chad Prather Show here on Blaze TV, uh, along with Glenn Beck, Mr. Glenn Beck, the one and only, who needs no introduction. Uh, and I'm, I'm. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. no I was just going to say I'd like to. I'd like to know how to invest in Flobies because how are we going to cut our hair? How I can't continue to have my hair grow. I look like one of them hippies now. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and it's not Need just the haircut. hair. It's not just that. Well, first of all, I would like to brag for a second. I did give my son a COVID-19 haircut. I did. And did it turned. Really? It, I did. And it turned out OK. It's actually super cute. <laughs> um, but I also I you're not the only one because my nails are oh, yeah. horrendously grown out. Oh, and you there's should, no end in you sight. should see. You should see my my wife. She just came up to me the other day. And she was, look at these, look at these nails. And I'm like, hey baby, do something about it. Stop complaining. What do you want me to do? Break your fingers off? No. Uh, we've got a lot to get into. Uh, but you know what? We were sitting here off air, and we were talking about how everyone, I think, all of America is bogged down by hearing about coronavirus every day. We've got to talk about coronavirus, and we will get to it because it is the news of the day, and it is important. But we're all talking about, we're all talking about Tiger King on Netflix. Yes. And, and uh, yes. Glenn, you just started I think watching that is it, right? More yeah, I think this is more important news. I mean, uh, you could go and talk about, oh, we're all going to die. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Have you seen the Tiger King? It's insane. It's insane. I was, I'm only up to, so don't tell me how it ends, because I know you guys have both watched it to the end. Okay. I've only watched the first three episodes. And I got to episode number two, and I'm like, I like Joe. I like Joe. <laughs> Okay, this is before I find out that he's, you know, a meth addict and, and probably killed somebody. Um, but he's at least, he's the most likable, and he's a guy married to two other guys and has like 170 tigers. But everybody in this, you're watching and you're like, well, that person's absolutely unlikable. And then you meet somebody else and you're like, my gosh, that person looked like Mother Teresa compared to this person. And they just keep coming with this cast of characters. I've, I mean, I feel so superior after watching <laughs> two episodes. I feel, I yeah. feel like a, like a Harvard snob, honestly. <laughs> it is amazing, these people that they have found. Amazing. Now, here's what's going to happen. The because the feedback, Glenn, mm -hmm. is going to be from two sets of people about this Tiger King show. You either love it or you hate it. I love it. it. There is no ambivalence. How can there you is hate no it? there are a lot of people who do. I have recommended it. I have probably made the Netflix producer so much money by promoting this thing and talking about it. I've probably created 800 memes at this point. We're part of a 250,000 member meme club just dedicated to the Tiger King. I was at midnight laying in the bed last night giggling. My wife was like, "You got to shut up and go to sleep." I'm laughing and I'm like, "This guy and I've talked to Joe Maldonado Passage, Joe Exotic on the phone a couple of times. Well, he's going to come on the Chad Prather show. Oh, they I just moved him from Oklahoma to Fort Worth, so he's local now. I, I'm going to go visit him. And uh, I got to talk to our friend uh, Sheriff Bill Weyburn, see if we can maybe get in there and have a little sit down with, with old Joe. But this thing is fascinating. It is the epitome of humanity. And They've they've now they're reopening the, the case. The epitomy of humanity. <laughs> oh, Wait a minute. Not, hey, let not me tell you why, Glenn. The other direction. No, no, let me tell you why. I have been all over the world and I have discovered that redneck is everywhere. This no, no, is no, no, wait, pure... wait, 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 wait. I like Joe because he's a redneck. I we like everybody that works for Joe. Yeah. I think the ones who are I think the ones that are absolutely I mean, when Joe is the good guy in it, it's crazy. 
because he's not somebody you want to hang out with or like right. you know bring home to mom in any way, shape, or form. But everyone else is so crazy and bad in the show. It's true that you're like, oh, thank goodness you're going to you, you're going to some place I understand. You're going to the GW Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> what I, the way I describe it, Glenn, is it's a story about a zoo, but the zoo isn't the animals. It's the people no, who the run the thing. True. It's so oh, it's there's not, a reason those tigers are eating people. Yeah, and, and I love. <laughs> it's that, like if this the, is what they're all like. This guy is so real. When one of his workers gets her arm ripped off by a tiger, he goes into the gift shop, <laughs> and he says, "Hey, if y'all want your money back, we're gonna have to postpone some things. We just had a worker get her arm ripped off, and then he dons an EMS jacket, an, an emergency <laughs> services jacket with a badge. I mean, that is the strongest flex I've ever seen. Who has that just laying I, around I, the house?" I know, I know. It was, it's so crazy. He's in there with a badge, and then the first thing he says is, I'm never financially going to be, I'm never going to survive this financially. What about the person bleeding to death right outside? But they're reopening the case in Florida against Carol, well, not against Carol Baskins, but okay. you know, her, her Don, husband, no Don Lewis, who turned up missing in, tw in, in 23 years ago, 1997. It's a cold case. It's a cold case, so now they're reopening the thing, and here's this person cuts. who was really <laughs> trying to be this nice, hey, you cool cats and kittens, Carol Baskin, has turned out to universally be the villain mm -hmm. in all of this. It's fascinating she's, to watch. She's awful. She's awful. <laughs> oh, I just don't like her at all. She is the I cat mean, version. tiger food. Yeah, she's the cat lady version of Hillary Clinton. That's exactly what she, she is. She really is. Yeah. Name. Unlikable. Oh, she's so unlikable and 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 so <laughs> high and mighty and flower child and oh my gosh! Yeah, she's got oh. her husband uh, Howard on a leash and he's he's down on his knees and he's wearing that that outfit that tiger outfit and that's not even in the top ten of weird things you're going to see so on this true. show. Oh no, no, it it's is crazy. The, it is it is the greatest <laughs> show and you know. I don't know if we, I think we would have, but I don't know if it would have been this big without the coronavirus because we're all at home thinking crazy thoughts and this is making us feel better. Yeah. We're like, yeah, the news makes no sense at all. We could all be dead. 30% unemployment. Yeah, but look at Joe the Tiger King. <laughs> you think that doesn't make sense? Look at him. <laughs> it really, I mean, if you have not watched it, you, it's unifying the country. So good. As Glenn pointed out, yeah. you have to watch it. And the best thing about it is it's not, it, it's not made up. Like, this is all real, yeah. and you keep no. thinking. every I, uh, Glenn, you're, you're still early on, so is it not? I mean, every episode you finish, you're like, how in the world is this real? And then it, it just keeps going and you keep you asking yourself the question. No one would believe this. This is, this honestly is, I'm a big fan of the people who make A Mighty Wind and, uh, yeah. and yes. uh, Best in Best Show yeah. and all of that stuff. I love all of that. It's those characters, yeah. except it's real. It's all real. It's, it's so unbelievably crazy. It, I just... I just love it, and it's only America. Only, and you, and you know, Glenn, that only Sarah, in America. Sarah's had boots on the ground. She's visited that place. I have been there. She has pictures. She's been there. Yes. On I, location. Yes. We, well, and it's funny because I actually, I went there um, not knowing what to expect, and we did the whole VIP experience with the baby. There were baby ligers, and we saw baby lemur and uh, a bunch of baby animals, and afterwards, I, I thought that the conditions were awful. And I was like, I will never go back to that place. I, I loved the experience, but I just can't give my money to a place that was as awful as that. And then I watched the show and I was like, I'm so glad I went there. <laughs> I know. And you know what? And then Carol, her place is awful. Yeah. Just awful. You, it makes Joe look like a palace. And then the guy who has the palace but is married to like 14 women. <laughs> oh my gosh, that guy. I mean, there's something really deeply disturbing about that guy and what he's running. <laughs> the nicest one is the one I run away from. And you know, you know it's a problem when the other weirdo uh, from, from Ohio and the the drug lord that was hiding <laughs> FBI bodies or DA, DAA agents is like, 
oh yeah, he's a troublemaker. You should step away from him. <laughs> really? The Scarface guy thinks he's a troublemaker. Huh. Okay. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> Who knew the big This cat is world news was so though. This is news. This is it what is. people have come this together is. over. And it is funny yeah. that this these are the wildest things out there that you just would never know. I sat up in the bed last night and it was on my mind and I just said these words. It's a phenomenon. Mm-hmm. It's a phenomenon. And it really is. The way the world has just gravitated to this thing is amazing to me. I, Chad, I would love to see. I know they don't show the numbers for Netflix. They never reveal them. But I bet it's, I bet it's, it's Super Bowl size sure. audience. Oh, I bet for sure. 100 million people at least have watched this thing. I mean, and it does say, at least uh, on the particular day, I think it does say what number it is in the United States if it's up high. And uh, every time I go to it, it says number one in the U.S. Yeah. So, and I know Ozark season three just came out, and everyone watches, everyone I know watches that, and everyone was anticipating this release. And I have not, it's always like number two or number three because Tiger King has just overtaken everything. Tiger King is, have you watched this other show, uh, Blind Date? Oh, Love is Blind? Love is Blind, yeah. yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Have you, so, Glenn Beck, seen it? <laughs> So I watched it with my family and my daughters last night. Okay. I'm drinking. I watched it with my daughters last night, and I watched it like this. I, I did. I watched it like this. And I got through half an episode, and I said to them, guys, I, I am killing brain cells, and I don't have enough left. I, the IQ level is so low here. I just can't do it after the Tiger King. I just could. I didn't have the strength <laughs> as a man to make it through a full episode, but they love that. What? Crazy. I don't even know what, I got what up. is even the premise. Uh, well, the premise, of course, is really nice. The premise is you're going to find real love because we're not going to let you see the other person. And mm-hmm. you're going to spend 10 days and you can talk to whoever you want to, but you cannot see them. You can't ask them about their race or their height or their looks or anything else. You're just going to have to love them for who they are. And so that you're going to find true love. And then... The day you decide to uh, ask them to marry you, after you ask them to marry oh, no. you, you can meet. Oh, mm. no. I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster. My, my wife looked at me last night. She said, is that even possible for a guy? <laughs> and I said, no, no, I don't think so. Yeah, what kind of weird man so. is no. proposing without seeing the woman? No. There's no way. I mean, men yeah, are visually I mean, oriented anyway, so there's just no possible yeah. way. Yeah. Right. So there's no possible way. And that's not saying anything bad about men or women or anything else. We're just different. We're wired through the eyes. Uh, But I I even think a blind man couldn't do that. I mean, there's things about people's sense and everything else. We are animals. We're Mm -hmm. animals, men and women. And I just don't. (laughs) Those marriages are not going (laughs) to last. Sorry. (laughs) Those marriages are not going to last. Not at all. I just, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it. Wow, that's bold. That's a really bold Glenn Beck Mm -hmm. prediction that we have right here. It does. You've got to be a loser. It's better than the usual world. (laughs) We're all going to die prediction. Uh, All right. When we come back, we will get into the latest with the coronavirus, uh, including Mike Lindell, who is taking a lot of heat from the mainstream media and from liberals for. I don't know, being a good Samaritan, I guess. We'll get into that. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So you're spending a lot of time in your home right now. Uh, it, probably the worst thing that could happen is if you just had your home's title stolen right out from under you, which actually can happen. Well, the FBI. The house could burn house could burn down and we all died in the fire that would also be okay well i mean bad. aside from that <laughs> okay <laughs> I, all right i'm just saying i mean we could also all get coronavirus and just and just die from that as well that could also be bad but uh <laughs> you're spending a lot of time in your home uh now is a really great time to make sure that it is protected uh, the fbi calls home title fraud, one of the fastest growing crimes in the United States. And the scariest thing about it is that this all of this happens online on the Internet where home titles are stored and you don't know that it's happened to you. So uh, hackers can go in, they can forge your home's title, they can take all of your equity, they can sell it outright to someone else, they can do whatever the heck they want with it and you won't know until it's done. Now here's the problem. No bank, 
no identity theft program. Nothing protects you except home title lock for just pennies a day. They will put a virtual barrier around your home's title and mortgage and make sure that if anyone comes in to try to tamper with it, they will shut it down. Right now, you can get one month of risk-free protection. All you got to do is go to HomeTitleLock.com. Use promo code Y to get that one month of risk-free protection. Enter in your address and see if you've already become a victim. Again, you're not going to know it unless you enter in that address. Go to HomeTitleLock.com, promo code Y. My pillow CEO Mike Lindell, uh, he is drawing the ire of liberals and the mainstream media alike because he dared in a in the coronavirus media briefing that President Trump held yesterday. He announced that his company would be uh, manufacturing 50,000 masks for the medical field per day. I believe it is per, per, day. Uh, per day. And he said this. But then he also said, he, I think he mentioned the word God and maybe the word Bible. And we all know if you mention those words, it cancels out any good thing you've ever done. Here's a little bit of what Mike Lindell said that was apparently so offensive. Watch. Now I wrote something off the cuff, if I can read this. Okay. <laughs> God gave us grace on November 8, 2016 to change the course we were on. God had been taken out of our schools and lives. A nation had turned his back on God. And I encourage you to use this time at home to get to home to get back in the word, read our Bibles and spend time with our families. Our president gave us so much hope where just a few short months ago, we had the best economy, the lowest unemployment and wages going up. It was amazing. With our great president, vice president, and this administration, and all the great people in this country praying daily, we will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. Uh, I didn't really see anything wrong with what he said, but apparently it's really offensive. Uh, liberals everywhere totally, totally dismissing the fact that he's trying to help during a crisis, which, by the way, I only see the free market uh, successfully stepping in and helping the government-run healthcare system during this, this outbreak, this pandemic. But Mike Lindell, uh, the worst person ever on, on God's creation because he mentioned that maybe we could be praying and stuff. Glenn? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'd just like to, uh, let me, may I read some of the quotes from uh, the press? Please. Uh, this is from uh, MSNBC. Uh, Trump just called the My Pillow guy up to the podium in the Rose Garden. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> What are you, um, are you effing kidding me? He has the my pillow guy on to sell his garbage product during a pandemic briefing. It's not like the president was like, but first, a word from our sponsor, Mike. <laughs> what is? Uh, no one fights a pandemic better or more scientifically than the insane my pillow guy talking the Bible. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. I don't know what they had a problem with. Was it that he was the maker and the designer of my pillow, which is sold on television, or was it a God thing, or is it the combination of both? Mm -hmm. He was also there, also stepping up to the podium to say a few words. Also, the head of Procter and Gamble, some of the biggest corporations around that are all making uh, these masks. All these people that tweeted, they're not making 50,000 masks. They haven't retooled their factory. They don't have a factory, but they haven't retooled their factory to make 50,000 surgical masks every single day. That's what Mike is doing. Of course, the president is going to let him stand up there. He had them all there to thank them for what they're doing. What is the problem, press? What's the problem? You know, Mike Lindell's a good guy. Uh, he's, a, he's a success story. He's a redemption story. Mike Lindell at one point in time yeah. had three crack dealers that sat him down and cut him off. <laughs> they had an intervention for the man. And so, you know, yeah. here's a guy with a huge past, a sordid past, who's not ashamed to tell you what, in his opinion, the grace of God has done for him. Where people got offended was that one comment that the grace of God gave us on November 8th, 2016, Donald Trump. 
That was the trigger point right there. And after that, it was how dare he. But it's not like President Trump asked the ShamWow guy come up there, the ch slap chop guy who came up there, like you said, to, to sell his wares or put snake oil out there. Here's a guy who's now turned his production of manufacturing over to 90 percent of protecting first responders with personal protection equipment. It's ridiculous. People have been turned over to a to a debased mind. I mean, it's just horrible. Well, I also heard Wait, since Go when? Ahead. When did we have this in September 11th? When did companies yeah. that were t doing good things, did we just torch them? We never did that as a nation. What are we doing? Who are we turning into? I shouldn't say this. Who is the media? Who mm -hmm. are they? And what do they think of you mm -hmm. that they think you're fine with torching a guy who's just turned his company over to making masks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenn, I, I also uh, heard a lot of people, now this is gonna seem like a very elementary question, and that's because it is, uh, but I saw a lot of people that were very, very confused saying that this was some sort of violation of the separation of church and state, uh, the fact that the president would allow, <laughs> I know you're oh rolling your eyes, but it's something that I saw widespread. Oh I saw God. journalists repeating it. I saw attorneys repeating it. I saw it everywhere. Uh, could you, would you mind? This is why <laughs> we're watching the Tiger King <laughs> because he makes more sense. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, oh my I, gosh. I saw it. This is just, not... Uh, State, the separation of church and state. First of all, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There is no wall separating church and state. What the founders were talking about was making sure that you didn't have to go to a certain church to become the mayor of your town mm -hmm. or to become the president of the United States. It was to protect not the government. It was to protect the religion. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, people are so stupid. <laughs> I would like to feed them to tigers. <laughs> Put them under the septic tank. I mean, you know, they use that <laughs> separation of church and state thing whenever they don't have an argument. It gets ridiculous. But nobody was screaming that when Bill de Blasio comes out and says we're going to shut down churches and synagogues permanently, which he certainly omitted mosques. He didn't say that. No one was screaming that when Nancy Pelosi came out right. and gave her a press conference about how she was so Catholic and very strong in her faith. Exactly. I pray for you, pray you did. Uh, you know, that's all this nonsense. And that's right. Glenn, I mean, what can you say? It, it's just stupid. And so we just, ha you know, we're kind of sit back and watch this thing unfold. It's absolutely ridiculous. I have never seen, well, maybe Joe Exotic, but I've never seen a more polarizing figure in the history of the world. I believe than Donald Trump. This I don't know. I think crazy. Joe Exotic is is more unifying. I believe he is. At least he's honest. Oh, he comes he in and says, "Well, we got to shut you down know today. We lost an arm." <laughs> no, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is is not himself polarizing. Um, he no man could do this right. on his own. Mm -hmm. It is the press that has made it into. He, they've made him into this absolute monster. Uh, to where no man can live up to what they've done. They, I, I'm telling you, it, it, tomorrow we're doing a special on the media, and the first half is the the first half is the real problem in America. The second half asks, you know, okay, that that could kill us, and the you know the economy could kill us, and it will actually end in death, and the COVID nineteen actually ends in death. But the, maybe, perhaps, is the bigger virus the media? Are they more dangerous than everything else that we're facing? And I think the answer has to be a thought out uh, answer. I don't think anybody can knee jerk say yes or no. You have to think about that one. And that, that should speak volumes that the American people would even consider a question. Is the, is the media more dangerous to the republic and to human beings right now than maybe the coronavirus? I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of that, when we come back, CBS News said it made a, just a mistake, an oopsie, uh, airing horrifying footage of an Italian hospital during a report about New York City. We'll get into that when we come back. Oh. It's just a new thing. Vote for Cuomo, vote for Cuomo, vote for Cuomo. <laughs> 
Before we get to that CBS report, uh, Chris Cuomo, CNN's Chris Cuomo, has apparently mm. been diagnosed with coronavirus. He sent out a tweet. May I? Yes, please. May I, may I interrupt? Because I think this is really important, and I'm, I have something to say about Chris Cuomo and uh, getting the coronavirus. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I wish you well. I wish you and your family well and a speedy recovery. That's it. Oh, okay. it's just it's it's nothing that they would ever say about any of us. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that they would ever expect us to say. They would torch us. But I don't know a single person uh, that seriously would want anything to happen uh, to Chris Cuomo, even though he is he's just a horrendous, horrendous, quote unquote, journalist. Um, and, and, and it caused so much damage, I think, but there isn't anybody in the conservative world that will celebrate if he's seriously ill or anything else, nor should we, uh, but they would never give that kind of respect to our side. It's true. Look, at what they, look how they treated, look how they treated Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great point, Glenn. Um, I, I went on and I read this this tweet from Chris Cuomo that I, I don't need to read word for word, but he tweeted out that he was positive for coronavirus. He's going to quarantine in his basement to try, you know, to make sure that he doesn't give it to his wife and kids. Uh, he made a joke that probably the rest of his family is pleased that he's quarantining himself in the basement. Um, but I went and, and kind of skimmed through. Now, this is purely anecdotal, but I didn't see, I saw a lot of conservatives. I didn't see one negative comment. It was all just, you know, get well soon. I wish you well. Uh, I didn't see anyone wishing him any sort of ill will, which, no. you know, Glenn points out that that's not what you see from the other side all the time. Well, it's because we tend to have class. <laughs> and that's something. Um, and it is. People with, it's funny how people with values, people with traditional values, people like Mike Lindell, who have faith mm -hmm. and have a belief system in something tend to be a little bit nicer. It's funny when somebody is gracious, it's usually because they've received grace. And so that's the thing. You know, I yep. decided that if you want to get tested for Corona, go touch a rich person's face, right? Because then they'll go, they'll test you because the rich people are getting it, right? Especially in Mexico, They're getting it. <laughs> the rich older people. But no, I, no you know, test. so if you're a celebrity, you've got it or something like that. But in all seriousness, I agree with Glenn. I wish him well. But I have friends who have come down with this thing, who have caught this thing. They say it's no joke to have it. We've heard about the minor things, but then I've heard people who say this is sickest I've ever been in what they've gone through and a lot of weird symptoms along with it. So, of course, we wish him well. We wish him well. Agree with him? No. Invite him to the party? No. But we wish him well. Yeah. Uh, so CBS News, they, they made an oopsie. See, uh, they accidentally aired this really mm. terrifying footage of an Italian hospital, and but they were talking about New York City and uh, mm. making it look like it was happening in New York City. Here is a little bit of that clip. This is the main hospital in Bergamo in Lombardy province. So it's one of the most advanced On the top you can see Europe. the New York. The, on the top was the New York footage, mm -hmm. and on the bottom was the Italian footage. Um, I, I'm having trouble really understanding how that would be an accident, because like, I feel like whoever pulled that original video <laughs> would have seen it labeled <laughs> as uh, an Italian hospital, and somewhere along the way, it would have really been pretty clear that this was not New York City. City. Am I missing something, Chad? I understand when you're doing a print article and on occasion you need to pull a stock photo, photo or maybe a stock video or something like that that expresses. And then you state that this is not the actual footage of that. Uh, I would have to think that CBS this morning has a pretty good filing system on their video stock and what they were pulling. So it seems kind of sketch to me. Yeah, I mean, especially with copyright rules, uh, you know, and everything that's in that involved in that, Glenn. I mean, you you gotta you have to label your videos uh, accordingly. I don't know how this happens. So they knew they obviously knew about it. Somebody knew about it. Mm -hmm. um, at at best, it was just really laziness. Mm -hmm. um, but in the grand scheme of things, how does it change anything? How does it change anything? What, 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 what is new about this, really? 
Yeah, it's it's true, but I think it it goes to you know the idea that the press is just constantly trying to um, whip oh, yeah. up fear or in the point, American public. Yeah, and point point out everybody else's flaws and point out how how righteous they are and how unrighteous we are and how perfect they are and how imperfect we are. Um, I'm just I just have to. T- <laughs> it's why I'm watching Joe the Lion King. <laughs> It's why I'm, I'm not Lion King, uh, Tiger King. It's why I'm watching the Tiger King, man. Uh, just because, and I think most Americans are like this. We 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 we've seen it, uh, and you know, it's it's almost like they're cheering for the demise of the country. It's crazy. That's a great point. Well, the virus doesn't know political parties. It's not going to be biased towards one or the other. Uh, But at this stage in the game, I don't think that the left particularly even cares anymore. Like I said, they're willing to crash the plane even though they're on it as long as the pilot is to blame. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you've seen this. I mean, you know, the way they come out at each other and the way they've come out against so many different people, it's it's just a matter of time. It's a circular firing squad. They're going to devour their own. This is just more of that. This is just more example of we've got to show you the worst. There's one of the things that's trending right now on social media is go take a picture of your hospital. Mm-hmm. Like prove, let, we were going to prove how, you know, how busy they are. I drive past several hospitals on my way to the studio every day, and they're business as usual. There's no triage tents set up out front. They're not having lines out of the emergency room. There's not buses or army vehicles bringing sick patients in every day. It's not like watching the movie Contagion or uh, outbreak or something of that nature. It's business as usual in that regard. My wife is a nurse practitioner in a clinic every single day seeing patients. This is, this is not what they're trying to represent. Although I will, so I just want to clarify, you're not saying that it, if there is, you know, uh, I mean, obviously it's worse in New York City than it is anywhere else. Sure. You're not doubting sure that, right? But We're that doesn't doubting mean that. And New I'm York not City casting is doubt. not Texas. Like I said a moment ago, I have friends who are dealing with this. They are sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, if, if you look at this, it's, it's they're trying to, and this goes back to the thing that everybody wants to accuse us of. They say, well, your president said it was a hoax. And you guys no, have said didn't. it was a hoax. He didn't say it was a hoax. Did not say that. This is a perfect example of the hoax. Yeah. This is where they take this crisis and they politicize it for their own personal gain and purposes. That's what this is. When he says the hoax, this is what he's referring to. Glenn, last word. But it's also it's it's also um, uh, an example of how the press, if it's happening to them, if it's happening in their backyard. It's the biggest thing ever. Yeah. It snows in New York, and it's, you know, three inches of snow. Look, the roads are closed. It's, it's 14 feet of snow in Denver. They barely cover it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's not affecting them. If the coronavirus would have hit in Kansas City, you would not see the kind of wall-to-wall coverage that they have in New York. It wouldn't happen, except it would, they would be covering it with the angle of, hmm, it's happening uh, it's happening in a red state. And uh, how do you feel about this? The president said it was a hoax. That's the only way they would cover it. And the biggest, the numbers don't lie about that, Glenn. The biggest contraction to death ratio right now is in Washington state. It's not in New York. Yes, there's more cases right. in New York, but it's in Washington state at like four and a half percent, whereas it's like 1.3 in New York in terms of contraction to death ratio. They're not reporting that. They're, I mean, they'll, they'll give it an honorable mention every now and then, but that's not the focus. Right now, it's all about Cuomo and his nip, nipple piercings giving a press briefing in exactly right. New York. It's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. It's exactly right. Uh, all right. When we come back, more Americans are turning to prayer. That's a good thing about all of this, right? We'll get into Seems that to when be. we come back. <laughs> I mean... Unless you're Mike Lindell. <laughs> You got to make lemonade somehow. Uh, A new poll from the Pew Research Center reports that uh, more than half of all U.S. adults say they have prayed for an end to the spread of coronavirus. Large majorities of Americans who pray daily, 86 percent, and of U.S. Christians, 73 percent, have taken to prayer during the outbreak. Uh, But so have some who say that they don't usually pray or never pray and people who say they do not belong to any religion. That is 15 and 24 percent, respectively. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we've talked a lot about Mike Lindell, 
towards the beginning of the show and uh, how he was treated by the mainstream media. Um, you got to believe, especially after seeing this and after hearing the president's approval numbers during handling this crisis, maybe Americans are waking up, Glenn? Am I being too I optimistic? Think they, I, no, I think Americans are awake. They know the score. They know what's going on. A lot of them, you know. Jefferson talked about 30%. If you can get 30% of the American people, um, you're, you're pretty good. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think 30, 30, 40% of the American people are awake and, and, uh, and know what's, what the score is, you know, and, and Mike is, Mike's just not afraid to say it. Too many people are afraid to say it. And I, I have great admiration for people who will just take it. You know, I'm doing an interview with Mike on, uh, on the podcast comes out Thursday. If you're a subscriber to the blaze or Saturday, just wherever you get your podcast, but I sat down with him for about 90 minutes, and that guy is a character and a half who's just not afraid to talk about anything. And uh, when it comes to religion, I think people are hungry for that. It's funny, when you're dead to yourself, not a lot of things matter. You're willing to put mm. yourself out there. Mike's that way. He's been, he's been to the edge of death, looked over into the abyss, and came back from it. Uh, you know, and, and it's the people like that that have been broken and have experienced those things in life that I think are, they become very useful tools, you know, and, and it looks foolish to the world. It really does. People are going to look at, at people who express their faith and they're going to say, yeah, you guys are into this mythology or some big being imaginary in the sky of being, you know, and, and it's, you know, you get all the ridicule. Not they'd have come out and said, well, this is, we're meditating, we're meditating. We're putting forward good, positive thoughts and vibes. Everybody would be like, way to go. That's fantastic. I mean, Hollywood would get on board with that. But to come mm -hmm. out and say that we are praying because we realize that in this mortal coil, we are feeble and frail. And that one day, as Isaiah said, the breath that's in our nostrils will be gone because that's all we are. And you realize there is very, po very possibly, folks, an eternity at stake. And if I'm wrong, then you're fine. But if I'm right, you might wish you that you did a little bit of that praying. <laughs> yeah. Simple. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Andrew Cuomo earlier and how the He's media, wearing nipple yeah. rings. That, I, you nipple know, piercings. I wasn't going to bring up that, you Glenn, it? you don't want to know, Glenn. Have you seen the picture, Glenn? I don't want to know. <laughs> no, I didn't see the picture. And I don't think I want to see the picture. I'll send it to you. Okay. No, <laughs> no I don't know. <laughs> now, it is, it is through the shirt. He's wearing a shirt. But the shirt is very tight, and it does look like he's got some nipple ring action ugh, yeah. going on. I, I, it, it's I wonder very if weird. Prince Albert wears an Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, he was asked by Chris Cuomo, who we mentioned earlier, uh, his brother, Chris Cuomo, he was on with him, which, by the way, the little, <laughs> the little shtick that they do with like, oh, mom and dad, uh, it was cute the first time. I don't think it is cute though, that they keep doing it. But uh, Chris Cuomo asked his brother, Andrew, whether or not he was running for president. Here's what he said. Take it or leave it. I'll get you guys' thoughts after. Uh, with all of this adulation that you're getting for doing your job, are you thinking about running for president? Tell the audience. No. No. No, you won't answer? No, I answered. The answer is no. No, you're not question. thinking about Sometimes it? Sometimes it's one word. I said no. Have no. you thought about it? No. Are you open to thinking about it? No. Might you think about it at some point? No. How can you know what you might think about at some point right now? Because I know what I might think about and what I won't think about. But you're a great interviewer, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't put a lot of stock into that. You, I mean, he can't say at a time where he's trying to keep his city safe. He can't be like, yeah, and I'm also eyeing that presidency. Uh, let me talk to you about that. Glenn? Yeah, but the way you defer is you just say, we, look, Chris, I don't know what I'm going to be thinking about in the future. Right now, I'm thinking about him saying no, 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 no is really clear. Um, and I don't know how he would get. I, I think that he is the the heir apparent. Um, and uh, if, you know, Joe Biden suddenly just can't function, 
for some reason. I think it's it's Cuomo that would 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 get the nod, uh, and I think he would think about it at that time. Mm. So of course, no, and, that's, and what happens? Of. No, right, but right, exactly. They came to me and they needed me. Right, and although I was not thinking about it. I realized My country that for the better me. place yes. for the country, I was totally against this, yes. but they needed yes. me. So there's an out on that. Yes. I mean, and also remember the guy's been lying about stores of ventilators and masks, too. So I don't put it past the Cuomo family to lie. Yeah. Well, you know, even President Trump has come out and said uh, he thinks that Andrew Cuomo would be a better candidate than yeah. Joe Biden. Yeah. How do you think he would match up against Trump? Well, I think Trump would love that because Trump's a counterpuncher. I mean, they, they're New Yorkers. They're, these guys, they know how to brawl. They know how to go at each other. I think Trump in many ways feels sorry for Joe. Everybody should feel sorry for Joe. Yeah, but if you're running against him, or I mean, I'm, if I'm running against Joe Biden, I'm like, Joe seems like he's well, got his stuff also, together. No. Let's run him. But it's also posturing yeah. on the part of Trump yeah, to yeah. do that. But, He's sowing yeah. discord, I'm sure. Glenn? I mean, I have to tell you, if I was running Joe Biden, I don't know how I would run the campaign because I just, I think it would be like pity. I think it yeah. would just be like, uh, you know what? He's an older gentleman, um, <laughs> and I don't want to say anything bad about him because uh, <laughs> I, I think he is, it's, you know, it, I've told my family don't let me go on too long, please. Yeah. And that's all I could exactly. say. That's all I could say because it would just be, it would be sad. Be sad. You couldn't beat up on him. Oh, but you could. Yeah, I oh, mean, but you, you could. Yeah, you say this, but our president is yeah, Donald but, Trump. So yeah, but our but if he's in there, he will lose. If he's in there, and and I think Joe is getting worse by the day. I agree. And if they're up in debate, and you know Donald Trump is just bashing him, and poor, uh, you know Joe is up against the ropes, and he's just like, I don't, I, uh, I what time is it, Alexa? What time is it? I mean, if he's just. <laughs> <laughs> out of it, uh, he could look like a bully quickly. Yeah, yeah, it could be bad. But if you go on in that interview between Chris and Andrew there, uh, Andrew goes on to talk about how he's known Biden for a long time. He's a nice guy. He's a gentleman. He's a great guy. Mm. Love him and all of these things, which sort of lends back, goes back to our point of saying, he can say, well, but, but Joe, my friend, just wasn't up to the task. And now it's kind of forced yeah, my Joe. hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe had to drop out because uh, yeah. he had a you know a problem. Yeah, to say I'm not thinking about it, but somebody's thinking ago. about it for me. You know. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, back in a minute. We got to take a break. I love that. Uh, he went to the. Do you? He, he was on his way. To the floor. Yesterday's poll, should churches be forced to remain closed during the pandemic? Uh, 56% of you said no. 44% of you said yes. Churches should be forced to remain closed. Okay, communists, just saying. Uh, today's poll question, <laughs> where is Biden? Sleeping, telling corn pop stories, yelling malarkey, or insulting voters? I, why, how can is you there just pick one? all of the above? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there should be all of the above. Pick one. Where is Biden sleeping, telling corn pop stories, yelling malarkey, or all of the above? I think he's in the recreational room listening this. to the record player. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If Joe Biden said, hey, why don't you hop into the old station wagon with me? I go for a drive. We're going on that really steep mountain road that has no guardrails on it. And I'm going to drive. How many of us would get into the car? Mm -hmm. I contend none. No. None of us would get in the car. Right? absolutely We're going to hand the keys of our nation over to him? None of us would get in the car. We'd be like, "Uh, no, you know what? I don't think that sounds safe. You shouldn't probably be driving. (laughs) Yeah. We would not do it. Yeah, absolutely not. That reminds me of that old joke. We're going to elect him? Yeah. Yeah, That's that old joke. You know, I want to go out like Joe Biden did, asleep. Die in my sleep, not like my family in the car screaming you know, that he was driving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, don't forget, we've got our biggest discount ever. Go to blazetv.com, news and why. Use promo code news. You will get $30 off right now.